You've probably seen this cartoon. In the first panel, the wife stops and says, you weren't listening to anything I just said, were you? The husband in the second frame, quick on his feet, thinks, that's a weird way to start a conversation. We can all relate to that scenario at some point in the past few months, right? We were a distracted bunch. Our attention spans were already limited and they are getting shorter. We're constantly interrupted by notifications, alarms, texts, calls, emails, questions, silly videos, and more. Paying attention to anyone for any length of time is increasingly difficult. Our mind and focus are often pulled away in multiple directions every few moments. We are also a busy people, constantly on the go. There's never enough time to do what we want to get done, much less the things we want to do. Busyness is a cultural epidemic that people seem to want to catch. Ask someone how they are doing and the typical response is, I'm good, but busy. Often we wear that busyness as a badge of honor or pride. We see busyness as a sign of prestige. Look how important I am. Look how much I give to others. Or look how many activities my family is involved in. Our schedules and calendars are full. We face time and attention deficits. Because time is scarce, we often selfishly hoard those little moments we have for ourselves or leverage them only for those closest to us or for those who can benefit us. We can't be generous with our time and focus because we've already stretched too thin. We can't fathom generously giving others our most precious commodity, time, we have too little of it for ourselves. The Bible's teaching on how we use our time and attention is countercultural. It's difficult for us to process in our frantic and preoccupied world. Instead of selfishly hoarding our time and attention, overfilling our schedules, we should learn to utilize our time and attention in generous service to God and to others. A few days before Jesus was crucified, he had dinner in the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead a short time before this scene. Mary, his sister, was still overcome with gratitude to Jesus. To express her joy and thankfulness, she generously anoints Jesus' feet with a costly perfume. We read this in John 12, six days before the Passover. Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner party for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. This is a magnificent picture of a follower of Jesus generously pouring out her love and affection for her Savior. She brought and bought an expensive treasure, a jar of costly perfume, possibly passed down as a family heirloom. To others around her, her actions were weird, over the top, confusing, and out of place. Yet Jesus doesn't condemn her or stop her. He allows and even encourages her to continue because he knows that she is anointing him for his upcoming death and burial. Mary's generosity goes beyond the financial cost involved with this perfume. She was generous with her attention, wiping his feet with her hair. Generous with her time, giving him adequate anointing that he deserved while neglecting all other duties. Generous with her reputation. She didn't care what others thought about her. Generous with her comfort, kneeling in the dust to wash Jesus' dirty feet. She was generous with her devotion. There was no other Savior to worship. Mary is a model of generosity. She focuses solely on Jesus and serves him with her time, treasure, and talent. This is not the first time Mary gave Jesus her time and attention. Jesus had previously visited them in their home. We find this familiar scene in Luke 10. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve all alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. While Martha hurried and worried in the kitchen, Mary chose the good option to sit at Jesus' feet and to listen. When Martha was possibly trying to love Jesus by serving him and his disciples, she was busy and distracted. Her attention and time weren't focused on the Savior sitting in the living room. It was on the checklist set before. Jesus doesn't want our busyness or sporadic moments of attention. He wants all of us. Time is probably our most valuable resource. We can make more money and develop greater talents and skill, 
but we only have a certain amount of time in this day and in our lives. What are we doing with our time? Where does our attention go? Is it toward Jesus? Have we learned to sit at his feet, unhurried and undistracted? Are we rushing through our morning devotions and our prayers so we can get along to the next thing, the things we think that really matter? Is our time given to others? Can we sit across from someone and give them our undivided attention without looking at our phone, the TV on the wall, the people passing by, or turning every conversation back on ourselves? What steals our focus away from the people right in front of us? What won't let us go? Far too often, I think, we are alone together. That means while we may be physically together with others, our friends, family, or spouse, we are often mentally alone, heads slumped over a softly glowing screen, eyeballs glazed over, and minds in a virtual world. Generosity is exhibited through giving away our time and attention to others, rather than focusing on our needs, our feeds, our problems, or our next item on the to-do list. Luke's passage about Mary and Martha comes immediately after the parable of the Good Samaritan. What's interesting about that parable is the range of generosity displayed by the Samaritan. He goes far out of his way, taking enormous risk and sacrificing his time to care for the wounded man, to bandage his wounds, and to transport him to safety. We think it's inconvenient to call or text someone back, much less drop everything we have, apply first aid, and rush someone to the hospital. As we look to building our church in the future, we need to consider how to leverage our time and attention to benefit those in our church body. Remember, we are not con simply constructing a physical building for people to use. We are building a people that God will use for His glory. Before creating a place for His people to gather, let's turn our thoughts and timetables to edifying those who will gather in that space. How can we utilize our time to serve others in our family and in our church? What attention will we give to those within our community? Think of these. Which of your children needs you to put your phone down and listen to them? What activity should be dropped from your family's calendar so you can gather for dinner? What widow or shut-in can you visit regularly? What church work days can you attend? What local ministry needs your help? What teenager needs a friend to play basketball with? What new believer needs to be discipled? What church member needs a ride to the doctor's office? What mission trip can you sacrifice vacation time to lead? What hurting person needs your presence at the funeral home? What time can you carve out to meet daily with your Savior? You may think many of these activities or people aren't worth your time. There isn't much return on this investment, so you prioritize something else. But being generous with our time means sacrificing what would benefit us for the benefit and love of others. From our perspective, giving these moments away may feel like a loss, but giving your time and attention in service and ministry to others will reap great rewards in the kingdom of God. The Lord sees what you are doing and how you are serving, and you will be rewarded. As we build our local church, listen to how the Holy Spirit tells you to slow down, make margin in your calendar and schedule, and give that excess to serve and love others. We will be distracted and worry about many things in this life. Will we, like Martha or like Mary, cling to the best portion, giving our focus, time, and attention to loving and serving Jesus? Or will we be caught up in a whirlwind of to-dos, extra work, ball games, hobbies, vacations, and self-care me time? Sowing our time generously to serve God and others is a challenge. It's hard work, but the reward is eternal. Pursuing God and serving others will always be time well spent.